So the Holy Spirit nudged me to go to Zechariah 4. So if you have your Bibles, please take it out. Uh, this is the NIV version. And um, I'm going to read verses 1 through 14. And this is a powerful uh, vision that the prophet Zechariah gets. And he gets some imagery that uh, kind of really relates to what we are talking about today and what God wants to do in your life in just a few moments. Let me read. Zechariah 4, starting in verse 1, says, Then the angel who talked with me returned and woke me up like someone awakened from sleep. He asked me, What do you see? I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lamps on it with seven channels to the lamps. Also, there are two olive trees by it, one on the right of the bowl and the other on the left. I asked the angel who talked with me, What are these, my lord? He answered, Do you not know what these are? No, my lord, I replied. So he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Everybody say Zerubbabel. Say it with umph, like Zerubbabel. Amen. Not by my nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Verse 7, I love this. It says, what are you, mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level grounds. Then he will bring out the capstone to shouts of God bless it, God bless it. Verse 8, then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands will also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you, Verse 10, who dares despise the day of small things? Since the seven eyes of the Lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hand of Zerubbabel. Then I asked the angel, what are these two olive trees on the right hand and the left hand of the lampstand? Again I asked him, what are these two olive branches besides the two gold pipes and that pour out golden oil? He replied, do you not know what these are? No, my Lord, he, I said. So he said, these are the two who are anointed to serve the Lord of the earth. If you're taking notes, write this down. I want to talk about heaven's oil is flowing. Heaven's oil is flowing. Jesus, we are so, ten, are so sensitive and leaning into your precious presence. We want to hear from you today. We want your word to transform the very deepest caverns of our heart. Lord, transform us into your likeness so that we are prepped and prepared and equipped to be anointed for this season in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, and everybody said, I don't know if you remember the first day you got anointed. I've shared this story before, but when I was 18, uh, we, our youth worship team was ministering up at, in Seattle and Vancouver in that area. And I remember we were at a prayer meeting. Uh, to a night session uh, that day, and the pastor was anointing everybody. He was taking a little jar like this and was uh, just simply putting it on either the forehead or on the hand of, of people, and at that time, I didn't know the significance of uh, anointing people with oil. I didn't have a biblical foundation of what oil meant or what the power of the anointing meant. But uh, he began to anoint everybody, and then he got to me. And as he got to me, he starts to prophesy over my life, and he puts the small bottle down, and he picks up the very, very large bottle and uh, uncaps it and dumps the entire thing over my head. And at that time, as an 18-year-old, I'm going, dude, you are a loser. Why did you just pour a bunch of oil over all of my blondish Backstreet Boy hair? You messed it up. Like, it was looking good. But I didn't realize in that moment was a representation of heaven on earth while the Holy Spirit was coming upon me for a specific purpose. I couldn't quite see, the, the, I didn't have clarity in the future of the call of God for my life, but I knew something was transferred. There was a download, there was an exchange, there was a Holy Spirit moment where I was marked, just like David was marked in 1 Samuel 16, when he was marked by the prophets, and he was marked with the anointing of God, the smearing, the rubbing in of God's nature into our spirit to set us apart for a specific purpose. It's a sense of divine backing. It's not that there's power in the oil, it's, but it's, it's a sense that when you are marked, you are set apart, there, that you are now uh, stamped with all of heaven, that everyone around you sees there's something different about your life. 
that you're not just trying to do this Christian walk by yourself. You're not trying to strive in the flesh. You're not trying to make ends meet, but you're saying, Holy Spirit, I surrender to you and I need your touch, the touch of heaven for my life today. Even kings in the Old Testament needed the touch of the anointing. Even prophets needed the touch. Even priests needed the touch. Even the apostles needed the touch. Mark 6, 13 said, and they cast out demons and anointed with oil those who were sick and healed them. So the anointing through the faith and through the power of the Spirit can deliver demons, uh, it can heal the sick, and it can commission people into ministry. And I really feel in this room there are people set apart for ministry. There are people in this room that don't even realize that you are meant to preach the gospel. There are people in this room that you don't, you're not even, you don't even realize that you are meant to rise up and use the God-given gifts and abilities on your life to lead people in the kingdom of God. That you have it, and it's not necessarily the oil that's the power, but when you use the oil, God backs it. It's a divine backing. And let me declare over your life today, you are anointed. You are anointed. You are called by God for exactly this moment in history. You are called. You are designed. You are strategized. You are forged. You are formed exactly for this moment. God breathed life into you. He put his spirit upon you, and he has anointed you. When God anoints, it is a gift. So if it is gifted, there's no take backs. He can't take it back. That's why the Bible says the the gifts of God go without repentance. That's unfortunate why we see some men or women of God that, that that can operate in the gifts but still live a sin behind the shadows of life. You see, God wants to gift you, and, and we say, well, I'm not, I'm not educated enough, or I don't have a, a great economical status. I don't, I don't have uh, A, B, and C, and I still live with weakness, and I still live in, with insecurity. Guess what? Perfect. You are exactly where you need to be for the hand of God to touch your life. If you could only see those, those students in the place, if you could only see what the Holy Spirit wants to do and anoint you in, to use you in your schools, if you could only see through the mind of Christ what he wants to do in and through your schools, by, by, through prayer meetings, through Bible studies, through allowing the Holy Spirit to use you to create a chaotic wildfire that could burst forth and win an entire school to Jesus. You see... Because there's something about the anointing. First Samuel 10, 6, it says this. It says, and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. This is the KJV version. Will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. Turned into another man. You mean there's a natural to supernatural growth. There's a sense of, wow, I'm stepping into a place. You take the anointing off my life. You take the anointing off of, uh, uh, of Billy Graham when he was on the earth. You take the anointing off some of the major men and women of God. They've got nothing. It's the anointing that's attractive. It's the anointing that's contagious. It's the anointing. And what is the anointing? The anointing is the Spirit of God. The oil is the Spirit. The anointing is the person of the Holy Spirit. You look throughout the Bible, not one man, woman, or child couldn't have done a thing without the anointing of the Spirit of God. You and I are anointed. You and I are called. You and I, raise your hand if you have a God-given dream in this place. That you're like, man, I am poised, I am ready. God, this is bursting inside of me at every seam of my spirit. I want to see this dream manifest. I want to see this dream, this heavenly dream come to reality. My friend, you need a touch of a fresh oil of the Spirit of God to see that. Man, that's when the, the Spirit of God comes upon you and you start to see everything that you're envisioning. The dream that's behind you, it has eternal ramifications. It has a sense that there is a divine balance. Backing. There's a sense that it's greater than you. It's, it's, it's bigger than you. The purpose cannot be fulfilled. It's so overwhelming. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, all things are possible. Can I get an amen? All things are possible. You and I, together, we are destined to partner with God. We are destined to bring the kingdom of God 
to earth as it is in heaven. And we are destined to fulfill as ambassadors of Christ. Our lives should represent Jesus. Our lives should look like Jesus. We should represent Jesus with everything that we do in our lives, with the the purpose, with the dreams to unmistakably influence our world for good and for God. And that's why I love the Holy Spirit led us today to Zechariah, this prophecy of a prophet declaring, God declaring through an angel, through the imagery, that Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah at the moment, he was the one that was going to lay the new foundation to rebuild the temple of God. Not just a project. Think about it. It's a legacy. Because they could forecast into the future. They could see that this legacy would one day have the Messiah in the flesh walking through the, the walls and the floors of the temple. This, this, this thing, Zechariah 4.1 says this, let me, let me repeat it, then the angel who talked with me returned and woke me up like someone awakened from sleep. And then he shows him this vision and he asked, what do you see? I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lamps on it with seven channels to the lamps. Also, there are two olive trees by it, one on the right bowl and one on the left of the bowl. And you ask yourself, what is this? What is this a representation of? It's a representation of a heaven reality of the Spirit of God working with the people of God. A partnership is being broadcasted through this vision. And the angel first starts by saying, I need to wake you from your slumber. I need you to get to, to a place of paying attention. I need you to adhere your voice. Isaiah 54 says, he wakens us morning by morning. He wakens my ear. I wonder if the Holy Spirit has the attention of your spiritual ears. I wonder if the Holy Spirit has your attention over the, 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 the noise of negativity, over the noise of how your flesh feels, over the noise of anxiety, over the noise of the oppression of media. I wonder if the Holy Spirit has your attention because if the Holy Spirit has your attention, he might be ready to download a vision. He might be ready to download and broadcast the vision for the next step that you're supposed to take in your business, the next step you're supposed to take as a man or woman of God in your family, in your marriage. The Spirit of God has to get the attention of the church, has to get us rattled. Everybody say rattled. If you could just take your neighbor and just rattle them and shake them, get their attention, we need the Spirit of God not only to make known to us divine things, but to make us to take notice of divine things. But we can't just know about it. We've got to take notice and we've got to apprehend that which is divine, which God is asking us to do. In our prayer life, we should be begging God, begging God in this new year, Holy Spirit, when you speak, let me be alert. When you speak, let me be aligned. When you speak, let me be postured. Let me be ready to adhere and obey. I need to wake up. It's a partnership in what the Holy Spirit, in this image, the prophet, the prophet is not just encouraging the Israelites, but the prophet is making a declaration that not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, that God in the rebuilding of the temple, in this moment, in the season of reconstruction, he is all sovereign and in all control. You've got to understand, you, you might see the climate of Colorado. You might see where the trajectory of things have changed in our school systems, in our political system. You might see Colorado wasn't, as exact, wasn't exactly the way it was when I was brought up in Colorado. But despite what is taking place physically and naturally, our God is saying, not by might nor by power, but he is absolutely in sovereign control of this state. He is in sovereign control and his church is rising and he's saying you need to rise not with last year's anointing, not with last year's ideas, not with last year's strategies, not with last year's abilities and last year's songs and words and, and all the things that, that you, you use to, uh, to conquer and accomplish all the things in 2023, but he's saying I need you to rise Ecclesiastes 9.8 says, let your garments always be white and let your head lack no oil. Oil in the natural evaporates. Too many Christians are walking this earth with evaporated oil. 
with a sense that there's, there's, there's no unction, there's no, there's no power, there's no gusto, there's no authority, there's no breakthrough. The, the anointing brings the overflow of Christ. And when you bring the overflow of Christ, last service, we got a, a lady to come up and stand on this platform, and she declared after all the prayer, after everybody pressing in and believing for her, that she stood on this platform cancer-free in Jesus' name. And I feel the Holy Spirit is saying to you, pay attention to the, to the supply of your oil. Pay attention to the supply of the oil that is in your life. Bride of Christ, make yourself ready. I, I did the stupidest thing when I was 16. No one told me to watch the uh, oil light. No one told me to watch the oil light. So when I was driving, I saw that, that red flicker in my oil lights, and I was just like Kramer and Seinfeld. I just kept driving. It was amazing. Just kept driving and kept driving and kept driving. And I'm oblivious to what was going on until one day my engine ceased. One day everything broke down. Believer, Christian, pay attention to the supply of oil. Ephesians 4.3 says, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. Today, we are making every effort to get out of our seats, get out of our comfort zone, come down to the front, to the altar, and allow the Holy Spirit to mark us. Allow the Holy Spirit to smear what we need within our spirit for this new year. Psalm 133. And the Passion says, how truly wonderful and delightful to see brothers and sisters living together in sweet unity. It's as precious as the sacred scented oil flowing from the head of the high priest Aaron, dripping down upon his beard and running all the way down to the hem of his priestly robes. This heavenly harmony can be compared to the dew dripping down from the skies upon Mount Hermon, refreshing the mountain slopes of Israel. And I love this. For from this realm of sweet harmony, from this well known sweet, sweet harmony that consists of the oil of heaven flowing from the top down, God will release his eternal blessing, the promise of life forever. The church must reunite with the Spirit of God. The church needs to reunite with the Spirit of God. Our, our, our chief and commander, our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus, when he, when he ascended, he said, I am going so that he can come because he knew that Jesus couldn't be 24-7 in every area of the planet, but he knew the, 20, the, he knew the Holy Spirit could be omnipresent. He knew the Holy Spirit could be in your house, in my house, in our car, in that car, in that car, and the Holy Spirit could be ministering. The church needs to reunite with the spirits. Can I get an amen? amen. Zechariah 4, 4 to 6 says this. I asked the angel who talked with me, what are these, my Lord? He answered, do you not know what these are? No, my Lord, I replied. So he said to me, this is what the Lord, the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. And I love this because the Holy Spirit led me into the amplified version of this. And it says, then he said to me, this continuous supply of oil, this continuous supply of oil is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, prince of Judah, saying, not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of whom the oil is a symbol, says the Lord of hosts. Now, let faith look into the word continuous. With faith, con uh, continuous defined means without interruption. So we're constantly butting heads with lack. We're constantly hitting the brick wall of lack, lack in the bank account, lack in our fridge, lack in ideas, lack in the, the potential of the business going to the next level. And we're, we're, the, the enemy would love to shower us daily with this sense of lack and the, 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 that we're just going to scrape the bottom of the, of the barrel and we're just going to get by as Christians and we're just going to have enough. But the Bible is saying that there is a continuous supply. There is a continuous overflow. There's a continuous potential that, that when the oil Oil is flowing from heaven. Let me tell you, the power of God is unlimited. When the oil of heaven is flowing, the, 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 the influence that you could have on this earth is unlimited. Everybody say unlimited. Your potential, your favor, your breakthrough, everything starts to turn your way when the oil is flowing. Not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. And a flow happens from a continuous connection, if I could have the worship team out. It's a continuous connection. What do I mean by that? So when uh, a river flows downstream, 
in order to create energy, a way they do this is hydroelectric dams. So they create a dam and they capture the momentous continuous flow of water, thus creating power. So in the same way, you and I have to position ourselves. The Bible talks about it as a constant connection of abiding. You have to position yourself as you abide, then this continuous supply of, 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 of power, of love, of mercy, of, of creative, innovative ideas that only come from the very heart and mind of God can start to exist and manifest in our lives. You see, John 15, 4 says, Jesus says and declares, apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can't have a thriving marriage. Apart from me, you can't have your kids come to Christ. Apart from me, your business is not going to go where I've desired it to go, but John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. So there is a, a dangling carrot for those that says, hey, if you want a constant harmony of unity and connection, you're abiding. What flows through the vine is going to flow through the branch. You are a joint heir of Christ, and because of this, you are grafted into the same covenants. It's continuous. It's ever-flowing. It's constant. Do you realize why the gifts of the Spirit have died in the church? Because the st church stopped using them. Once you open the door and you let it flow, it's constant. Trial it this week. We declared that in the last service that there's a prophetic anointing that's coming over this church. There's a brand new razor sharp prophetic anointing that's come upon this church. I dare you to prophesy over someone this week. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's, maybe it's an employee. Maybe it's a, a friend or a neighbor. I dare you to hear from God and share it. And then all of a sudden, every hour, you are going to be stormed with the voice of God speaking to you and sharing with you, saying that, that's for her, that's for him. That person over there eating the In-N-Out burger, go pray for that person. It's gonna be amazing. Who loves In-N-Out? In Jesus' name. But you gotta understand, this connection, you, you can't connect religion, you can't connect religion with truly following Christ. It doesn't work, it clashes. And that's what a lot of us do. We take the box, box of tradition and we think that, hey, I'm, I'm fulfilling what I believe, I'm, I'm traditional, I'm, I'm adhering, I'm, I'm doing the A, B, and C. But if I truly want to have a great marriage, I'm not going to go home and constantly ignore my wife. I'm not just gonna go home and, and just go down to the basement and, and get, in, get my guitar and, and write songs and just completely ignore my wife. Because a relationship is, 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 a, is a continuous supply of exchanging love in the sense of being authentic and genuine and sharing your heart and, and sharing the, the goods and the bads of the day and, and dreaming together and, 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 and encouraging one another and praying one to, to, together. But if you ignore your, your spouse, all of a sudden there's gonna be resentment and then all of a sudden there's gonna be animosity and the animosity can turn into anger and, and the anger into jealousy and then all of a sudden it, it creates divisiveness and brokenness. And, and I just look at that in a marriage and I see the same thing. For too long the church has ignored the Holy Spirit. The Bible says we can quench the Holy Spirit. It means we can stifle. It means he's such a gentleman that he's not going to force his way into our services. He's not going to force his way into your prayer life. He's not going to force his way, but he's inviting. He's, he's requesting, would, would you allow me to come to a place? And I really believe that the church has to renew its vow with the Holy Spirit. Renew its vow with the Holy Spirit to love, to cherish, to honor Holy Spirit in His rightful place in the church of Jesus Christ. Does that not mean that, we, that we, we, we don't talk about God the Father? Absolutely not. Does that mean that we're not radically obsessed with Jesus Christ? No, absolutely not. But guess what? When we are truly seeking truth, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of truth, all He wants to do is just reveal Jesus. All He wants to do is, is boast on Jesus. All He wants to do is exalt Jesus. Everything is about Jesus. When the Spirit of truth is exalted in the house of God and amongst the believers. Let me tell you, the Spirit of God is about to come into your prayer life 
We've declared the year of Gethsemane. That just means the year of revival in your secret place. That you're about to step into a new uh, sensitivity and a new tenderness with the Holy Spirit. That you're, you're going to start to hear the, His voice. It's, it might be a low decibel at, the, at, the, at first, but all of a sudden, it's gonna, it's the, the, the volume's going to raise and raise and raise. And all of a sudden, you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that is the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because it's the Gethsemane promise. Jesus contended in Gethsemane for the perfect will of the Father because all of humanity depended upon it. And I know this is a crazy John the Baptist statement, but I believe that if we engage in the Gethsemane promise this year, that all of the balance of Colorado depends on it. I believe that if the church rises up and falls in love with the person that they're praying to, falls in love with this, this, this not this assignment of being busy, but not this assignment to persuade, but this assignment to come and engage and encounter and go to a loving God that wants with every intention of his heart to answer the prayers that you lift up to him. If the church falls in love with prayer, guess what? It's inevitable for revival to touch the soil of northern Colorado. When the church falls in love with prayer and is not afraid of their reputation, not afraid to declare, not afraid to, to put themselves out there and say, God, I am going to be a man and woman of prayer. I'm going to be a, a catalyst for revival. <coughs> I'm going to be an open hinge, a door, a doorway for all that God wants to do in this hour. I believe Gethsemane is a call to greater faithfulness to Jesus. That through the anointing, through the power of the Holy Spirit, He will help you become greater faithful to Jesus Christ. Not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. You see, long, long gone are the days that we as Christians just bring a prayer request to God. Day one, bring it. Day two, bring it. Day three, and all of a sudden we just feel like it's just falling at deaf ears and nothing's happening. You see, Matthew 7 gives us a picture to ask and to keep asking, to seek and to keep seeking, to knock and to keep knocking. That's why from this platform, from this microphone, we declare that this, this house has a revival resolve. This house has a revival or nothing resolve. It's just Jesus. We want to see all of heaven manifest on this earth. We want to see every single one of you step into your potential. Step into the complete manifested potential in which the, per, the blood of Jesus purchased for you to step into and to live. Ask, seek, knock. That's why we're... We're, we're, we're cultivating a sense of sustained prayer, a sense of God, we're going to continue to bombard heaven with these prayers, not to persuade you, but to bring this request before you day in and day out. God, until we see with our eyes the manifested vision. Guys, the, the manifested vision is that every sim, single one of us simply becomes a disciple of Jesus Christ. That every single one of us have, have a burden in our hearts for the lost. That when we go out of these four walls, that, we, that we're going into the highways and the byways and the streets, and we're not just thinking about ourselves. We're not, just, we're not just infiltrated by today's selfish culture, but we're thinking about others and how we can, how we can love someone and buy someone else a coffee and, and, and pray for someone and, and share a prophetic word for someone. Invite someone to church because guess what? The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. And our vision is to see every single one of you bring someone to church, every single one of you bring a lost soul to church so when the gospel is given the response is people are pushing each other out of the way to get out of their seats and coming to the altar throwing themselves at the altar throwing themselves at a prostrated place saying I need Jesus if we could only become the church which I believe we can it's gonna be through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit Zechariah 4, 7 goes on to say, what are you, mighty mountain, as we conclude? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. I love that, that he doesn't just stop at not my might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. He, he goes on to declare, 
What are you? A mighty mountain? What are you? Anxiety? What are you? Sexual trauma? What are you? Failure of your last business? What are you? Divorcee? The enemy, he's prophesying into, into what seems to be an overwhelming Mount Everest that's impossible to conquer and climb. But he's prophetically declaring, this mountain is coming down in Jesus' name. This mountain is coming down. And I'm telling you, we are going to cultivate such a house of prayer that the spiritual atmosphere is going to realize the heavens are not just going to stay slightly open like a, a little window that is just slightly open. I'm telling you, we are going to rend and rip the heavens open over Loveland, over Johnstown, over Greeley, over Fort Collins. We are going to rip the heavens open that people are going to fly in from Las Vegas. They're going to fly in from Hollywood. They're going to fly in from China and say, what is different about Loveland, Colorado? What is going on in Loveland, Colorado? It's not one man. It's not one woman. It's not a preacher. It's not a singer. It's the men and women of God that have decided to get on their knees and pray and believe that God can do what he says he can do. Can I get an amen? Let's stand to our feet. I want, I want this time for anointing. What we're going to do is we're going to pray. And the worship team is going to begin to sing. And then the ministry team is going to come out. And what we're going to do is we're going to dismiss the first three rows first. They're going to come out and get uh, anointed. And we would love to spend all day prophesying and praying over you. And uh, I mean, we've had to get out through hundreds and hundreds of people, all, all three services. We'd love to spend that time. But what we're going to do is we're just going to pray, anoint you, and then uh, you can go back to your seat. And, uh, and then the next four, five, six rows come out then on and so on and so on and so what we're going to do so let's let's do this to prepare our hearts let's put our hands towards heaven and for the next 60 seconds i want you and the holy spirit i want you to begin to lift your voice in gratitude and thankfulness preparing your heart to receive what he's about to do in your life come on i want you to begin to thank him come on thank him come on there's something brand new there's something so powerful that you don't even understand the power you don't understand the ability. You don't understand the, the potential of, 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 the, of the faith that's coming to your life. You don't understand what God wants to do in your business. You don't understand what He wants to do in and through your life. You don't understand the people that, that he, you, he wants you to reach. You, know, you don't understand the atheists that He wants you to lead to Jesus. You don't understand the, the Satanists that He wants you to lead to Jesus. You don't understand the, the potential of who you are. So Father, we thank you. We prepare our hearts right now in Jesus' name. We prepare our hearts to receive the anointing of God, Lord, that smearing, the rubbing in, in Jesus' name, of the Spirit of God, the faith, the authority, the love, the power of God, Lord, for such a time, for this season, in Jesus', in Jesus mighty, mighty name.